I'm Kristen Cruz on KHTS. Thanks for joining me again for another Thursday lunchtime mommy chat. How's it going? How's it been going with the back to school thing? Is it good? Is it okay? Oh my gosh. How many posts on Instagram have you seen of back to school pictures? There are so many cute ideas too. Just like forehead, palm to the forehead when I see some of the cute things that these moms have done with their kids, holding little signs up and the way they do it each year. And I was not that mom. I was not. I just, oh, and it blows me away how creative people are. Doesn't it just blow you away? You look at Pinterest and it's just like, oh, how do they do it? I'm a bad mom. Speaking of, do you know there's a new Bad Moms movie coming out for Christmas? Did you know that? I'm going to go ahead and post the uh, Bad Moms Christmas trailer up on my blog. And we've got some more movie talk to do today on The Mom Show. But let's hop into a movie that's opening today in theaters. It's called Home Again, directed by Haley Myers Shire. If Myers sounds familiar, because it is. It's Nancy Myers' daughter. And uh, it stars Reese Witherspoon, a mom actress I love here in L.A. And my friend Kathy Kopka got to hang out with Reese, chat with her, and already see the movie. So I'm having her on the show to dish with us. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hello, sunshine. How are you? <laughs> you're the greatest. I am so glad that you're able oh, to you're chat. Awesome. Now, Kathy has to go Thank pick you. up her son soon. So she's only got a little bit of time. We are going to have her back next week and talk to her some more. I've already roped her into this, whether she knows it or not. I love it. Uh, good. I okay. love it. So Kathy, yeah. you, can, you can find Kathy at BelairMommy.com, is a blogger and influencer and gets to cover a lot of movies and Hollywood parties and things going on because she talks about it online and on the internet and they, they want her to talk about their film basically so you got to yeah. see an early screening of home again I the did. new reese witherspoon film and i i have to tell you i'm the biggest nancy myers fan are you a nancy myers fan already uh, huge huge huge, okay. huge and huge. for people I mean, who the do, moment i heard about nancy i was like i'm in i didn't and then i heard reese i'm like i'm even, I'm in even in. more yes and so if you Double don't in. if you don't know who nancy myers is i'm talking she's made your favorite iconic films mm -hmm. from Private Benjamin with Goldie Hawn to The Holiday, yeah. which is my personal favorite movie of all time with Cameron Diaz the and Kate Winslet, The Best, and The Intern with Anne Hathaway, Robert De Niro. That's Nancy Myers. So her daughter is all grown up and making movies of her own. Now, I'm going to play a clip of Kathy catching up with Reese Witherspoon in just a sack. They were on the red carpet after she saw the movie. And you got to just like a real quick chat. And by the way, this is on Kathy's Instagram. So if you follow um, Bel Air Mommy on Instagram. Reese Witherspoon! Hi. We just saw it. Home Again. Okay, what'd you think? I loved it. It was absolutely perfect. I, I could hug you and kiss you, but you think I'm a fanatic. So there, there you go. But the movie was great, you guys. You have to catch it. And you know what? She depicted the single mom so beautifully. It touched my heart. I cried most of the time, but God bless you. It was amazing. Thank you for everything. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks and to all the single moms out there. Peace. You'll love this movie. Thank you. All right, we're going to say bye, guys. Bye. Okay, I love that Reese, when you, like, she, ch and and there's Kathy holding her phone up, like, full-on Instagram live in Reese Witherspoon, like, photo bomb, boom, go, Reese, and she did the shout-out. I gotta tell you, Southern Hospitality, <gasps> this woman is the kindest woman. I just wanted to grab her and hug her, but I thought, oh, my gosh, she's going to think, who is this woman? She was so kind, she was so sweet, she was so inviting, and she was just so so full of energy. Mm, yeah, she has great she's energy. Amazing. Now, amazing. she yeah. gave a shout out to single moms, and I know that a little bit about the yeah. premise of the movie has to do with the mom moving um, and having to set up her life, her new life. And Kathy, I know Correct. you also blog a lot Correct. about this, so this was right up your alley. Um, tell us. Right up the alley. Right and up you the know, alley. Reese was a single mom for a brief That's right. Bit. That's right. right. After Ryan Philippe. That's right. right. So, okay, so Correct. fill us in about this movie that we can see now today in theaters, Home Again. What's it all about? So the movie is about, just like you had said, Reese's character mm -hmm. um, picks up her children, and she flies out to L.A., and she lives in L.A. And the funny thing is, is that the school that her kids are going to um, – was shot in Palos Verdes, the, the, um, the school out here. So I remember being made because I drive by it every day. And so it was so funny that uh, we were talking. And, and so I'm so sorry. So this, the movie is about a single mom coming out here. And you know what? As moms, and even as I, mean, I think it's doublesome when you're a single mom, you're always worried about if you're doing the right thing for your child mm. or your children. Aren't we and all? that's what it's yeah. about. You know, she, she made the decision of coming out to L.A. because she feels that, you know, it will be better for her children. It will be better for her. It will be better for their life. But you're always questioning that. 
Mm-hmm. And even though you've got family around, you're always worried, okay, are my kids happy? What do they need? What can I provide them? And she finally realizes, you know what? She's doing the best that she can, and she is a good mom. And that's mm-hmm. really important. That we, I think we are our own worst critics. And I think we're extremely hard on ourselves as moms, and I think that we need to cut ourselves some slack. And this is a great movie that teaches you as moms, hey, chill out. You're doing a great job. I like that. You know, your kids are doing great. They're happy. So it was just a good movie all around. Honestly, I'd grab the girlfriends this weekend. I'd make a night out of it. I would go to Mm. dinner. And then I'd go um, and see this movie. It's a great movie. Okay, Nancy Meyers' films stick with me. They are, like, a part yes. of – I think they're part of my real life. Like, I think I'm in her movies. It's really weird. Yes, but, you yes. know, <laughs> I want all of her kitchens and her interior designer to come to my house. <laughs> oh, the oh, kitchen. Oh, the kitchen. Oh, my, oh, my gosh. So, uh, but when we watch this film, are we going to be laughing, crying? Do I need to get a glass of wine on my way into the theater? Laughing. Really? I definitely need wine just, just because laughing your head out. There's this one scene, and I'm sorry I'm going to spoil it here. There's this one scene where Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> Reese Witherspoon is hooking up with the character. And the character, uh, the gentleman character, and he, and he feels sick. He's about to, you know, because they've had a little too much to drink. Oh, no. and But they're about to hook up, and he's about to get sick. And she goes, oh, my God, do you need a bucket? Do you need this? Do you need that? And he turns around, and he goes, you sound like a mom. And I started <gasps> laughing because I thought, that would be me. Oh. I would be like, do you need this? Do you need that? <laughs> So I don't think we ever leave mom mode. And it was just so funny because I, I just related with that 100%. The movie is hysterical. Well, you it, it does have its moments yeah. of, oh, you know, you'll get teary-eyed, but it's, it's funny. And it's you have reviewed movie. so many films, and you really, you've, see, you've seen yeah. the gamut. And so this one being, I'm, I'm assuming geared towards women like you and me and moms. Yes. See it. It's also Correct. written by a female because Haley wrote it. And directed it. This is her first, as far as I know, feature film that she's directed. And then her mom, Correct, Nancy. It is. Okay. And then her mom, Nancy, produced it. So this is a powerful group of women in Hollywood all getting it together is. to make this movie. I'm wondering if that comes through. Like, did they hit the mark better than maybe in other films? They, absolutely. You know? They hit yeah. the mark. And I got to tell you, um, as one woman to another woman and everyone who's listening to this, it's extremely important that y'all go out this weekend and see this movie and Mm. give it the numbers that it Mm. needs because we do want them to produce more movies in the future. We want women um, empowerment and we want them to be there. We want Mm -hmm. them to be significant forces. And these two together, mother and daughter, they're absolutely amazing. What what a, you know, force to be reckoned with. They're so talented and so funny and so, my God, creative. (laughs) I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing to me. So I, I really do hope everyone gets out there this weekend and recognizes the movie and, and, and promotes it the way it needs to be promoted because everyone will love it. On the phone with Bel Air mommy, Kathy Copcut, and she's yeah. absolutely right from being a Hollywood insider. She knows that it is important if you want to support women in film and these kinds of numbers, just like I think you and I were at Unforgettable, at the Unforgettable yes. screening, right, with Rosario Dawson, and we were sitting with... Um, Correct. Yes. And, and that was a powerful house of women also making films together, and we were like, oh, my gosh. And they even told us. We sat down with the director and with them. Why mm-hmm. am I blanking on the other star of that movie? Um, uh, uh, sh- um, Hello. Uh, Charlie's Angels. Kill me. Uh, oh, no, Cheryl Ladd, for sure. Cheryl Ladd. Ladd. Yes. Amazing. Yes. And Cheryl then, Ladd, and um, uh, I'm going to think of her name Kathy, right now. Kathy, Kate. Is it like your name? Is it Kathy? That would be embarrassing. Is it Kate? Anyways. So, you know Unforgettable, right? So, right we, now, we were sitting was, there with um, the, know, what? <laughs> Because we're moms. We've had not enough sleep, too much caffeine, and we can't think straight. Goodness help us. Anyways, but they were actually telling us, like, from the studio perspective, from the from the actual directors, the producers behind the film, like, please, you don't understand. When, when we make films like this, if there are big numbers, Hollywood will embrace doing films like this again. And it's just like when people want to make some sort of, you know, a statement politically or, or whatever in life. You hit them when, where their pocketbook is is usually where they're going to re- <laughs> when they're going to react, right? So that's so important to go see the film and support it. Home again. It's starring. Uh, oh, Kathy. I lost it. Hi there, baby. It babe. was Denise Denevo. Hi, baby. Denise Denevo. 
another the director. incredible director, you guys. Amazing director. Uh, yes, she's incredible. So I, we were just saying, you know, it's really important for us to go and support these films so that Hollywood will make more yeah. of them. Bingo. Yes, please. All right. Because you know what? We don't want to miss out on movies like this. They're great. Exactly. Uh, Kathy Copcut, thank you so much for being on the mom show with me. You can catch Thank you. Me. Have a wonderful day. Oh, go get your son now. Bye bye, honey. Bye, love. See you guys later. Bye. Okay. Belairmommy.com. Now it's Bel Air. B E L A I R. Mommy is M O M M I E dot com, which I love. And also, she's on Instagram, and we posted it at the mom show, is also on Instagram, of course. We posted the video there for you to see. So you can see Reese Witherspoon, right? And I mean, Kathy's not shy. She got right up in, <laughs> in Reese's business. That camera, her phone was like right in front of her face. And got the cutest video of the two of them talking right in front of the movie poster. I mean, it, it could not, as a seasoned journalist, I, she could not have, I have to give her kudos. She could not have done a better job. It was absolutely brilliant. It's like 23 seconds of Reese, and it's just absolutely adorable. So go and check her out on Instagram. And it's also on uh, the Mom Show Instagram page for sure. Follow us both. And Kathy, like I said, is on a lot of red carpets and doing a lot of fun things like this. That's, that's the blogger world that I came from. And that's the, the blogging content and my great friends that I brought to a podcast, which then turned into the Mom Show radio show. Because we really do get to do some pretty cool things and meet some interesting moms that have some great stuff to say. So, Home Again, I know it's in limited release today. I'm sure it'll hit everywhere tomorrow. Directed by Haley Myershire, the daughter of Nancy Myers. How cool is that? And if you have not yet been bitten by the Nancy Myers bug. I know it sounds like I've just totally bought into this one hook, line, and sinker, but I am telling you, she is my top top five directors. She's right in there. I have a couple of friends that I got to put in the top five too, but for top five directors, Nancy Myers, The Holiday, The Intern, these movies, it's complicated. Ugh, such a great film with Meryl Streep. Do you have a pen? Are you writing this down? I hope you're writing this down. Make a list of Nancy Myers films. Google her and, um, and get into it. It's so much fun. Thanks again to Kathy for being on the phone with us. And when we do post up the podcast of today's show on hometownstation.com in the archives, you can, oh, hopefully we'll be able to also put up the video there. Yeah. Cody says, yes, we will. And we're going to put it there for you to see too. Cody, I'm glad that you're, you're chiming in a little bit here because I do have a question for you, sir. So Babbel is uh, Disney's outlet for mom talk and parenting online information. And it is so much fun. They have the most creative writers and editors and bloggers. And they've graciously um, clued me in early to some of the hot topics that, that they're buzzing about over at Babbel, which is super cool because we love Disney. We love Babbel, right? And they posted something today that I've got to tell you I am not so sure about. Um, it's one of those like, don't, I don't know. Okay, so I'm a pumpkin spice freak. I love pumpkin spice lattes. You should have seen me and my kids when we went to Starbucks the other day, like a day ago, and we saw that PSLs were already on the menu. Freak out time in my car. Total explosion of excitement. Well, now apparently there is something that is called pumpkin spice cough drops. Yes, uh, a, yes a blogger on Instagram by the name of at Candy Hunting. On Instagram, that would make sense. She's hunting for candy. Uh, was it CVS? It's right here. And and picked up a, a bag of pumpkin spice cough drops. Now, Cody, oh, look at his face. He's like, is that going too far? Because I love my pumpkin spice. I, I mean, what I guess it's not going too far because people really? like, you love pumpkin spice. They'll probably buy them and, you know. I don't know if they taste good, but, I mean, having pumpkin spice everything is interesting. It's kind of the thing to do, right? Yeah. I love how you referred to them as PSLs instead of pumpkin spice lattes. I thought you that know, was really cute. That's so high people roll. out there who love them, you know? That's high roll. Hashtag PSL. PSL life for me. <laughs> All right, so Cody would try the pumpkin spice cop drops. We also got some more great little topics that came out from Babbel. Uh, they shared the early preview of the Bad Moms Christmas trailer. I didn't even know they were doing a Christmas movie. Cody, your parents didn't let you see Bad Moms, did they? Uh, no, of course not. not. They let me see movies rated R, you know. That's right. That's right. Only PG-13. PG-13 and them. below. Yeah, it depends on what Cody's the PG-13 is for. practically 13. He's so young. But how old are you, Cody? I'm 25. You're 25? You look like a little baby face. Oh, well, thank you. 25 is a baby, though, right? Because we're moms. So until you're like, you know, 80, you're a little baby. Your little baby. Well, and Cody is always here on the mom show, running the show here. So 
we were really lucky to have him here. So Bad Moms Christmas movie is coming out. This weekend, there's another movie that's hitting DVD for the first time. My kids got to see it. It's Captain Underpants. Were you able to see that movie? Because I know that one is not rated R. I wasn't, but I do remember reading the books. I read the books, so I'll see if the books were better than the movie. You I'll know, see. That's more in your wheelhouse, actually, because I, I, I didn't obviously read them because they came out when I was like 35 or something. And my kids are too young, so we kind of missed the whole Captain Underpants thing. But that would be more... Kind of your age oh, group, yeah, right? They, they were coming out when I was in elementary school. Oh, that's perfect. Be like late 90s, maybe early 2000s. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the sweet spot. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay. So, and so you read some of the books, the Captain Underpants oh, books? They were, they were a lot of fun. They were, um, they were done in the weird style where it was like kind of like a novel, but a mm. lot of uh, illustration. And then a lot of, you know, they do the stuff where it's like grab these two pages and whip them back and forth and it looks like the pictures move. A lot of fun oh, stuff like that. that's smart. Yeah. So, I mean, as kids, it was great. It got me reading, which, you know, That's good. always good. If we can get kids reading, I'll take it. Like, whatever it takes, I'll do, let's do that. Of course, yeah. So, Captain Underpants, I've seen the movie because I have kids. I've seen it 18,000 times. And it is actually very cute. And I like animated films. I have a long history with animation and animated films. And, and I really do love that medium. And my kids, obviously love it. In fact, my daughter is still slightly scared of live action. She's like, oh, gosh, that's weird. I don't know. So maybe I've taken it too far. She only watches cartoons, and she's eight. But um, Captain Underpants uh, screening is happening this Sunday downtown, and the studio asked me if I'd like to come down with the kids, and they're going to do a Captain Undercan- Underpants carnival show where they are turning a whole stage, warehouse stage, into the treehouse in the backyard where the like Captain Underpants comics are created, they're recreating that treehouse and they're gonna have like cotton candy and entertainment. They're actually gonna have a little station for kids to make their own graphic novels, their own comic books. So we're gonna be there. So I think that I'll have to Instagram live from there. Maybe I should do it on the KHTS Instagram page while of I'm course, there Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah, Eleven AM. You should tune in and check it out. If you have kids that love Captain Underpants, and I think it's pretty popular, then you should check it out because I'll be there with my kids. You can see my family. We're gonna go enjoy that. So there's actually a lot of movie news going on and thanks to Babbel for always keeping us up on things what we're going to do each week with Babbel is feature a blogger to come in and chime in on some of the issues and hot buzzing topics that they have on Babbel that they're sending me there's actually one right now that was actually kind of a mind blowing and that I'm definitely going to have to share on my own blog a mom came out to the car in the morning and she rushing with her kids, trying to get everybody to where they're supposed to go. Finally gets her daughter in there. She's got to take her to dance class. Looks at her, her starts her engine, looks at her gas gauge, and it's on empty. It's like, come on. And she realizes in that moment while she's clutching the wheel and stressed to the max that her gas tank is not the only thing that's running on empty. And it was this like amazing realization that she just decided I need to share a little bit on social media about self-care. So her running on empty post went viral. It hit the Babel community. Uh, Moms are all just saying, girlfriend, hand up. I totally relate. And we all need to just take a minute to chill, take care of ourselves. And she says, no joke. I really feel like my whole life is running with an, a gauge down on the E, and it's time to refill it. So I also want to share that and post that up on my blog. So make sure you follow at Kristen Cruz and on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook, and I'll have that up there because it's just a great re- reminder, moms, that we need to take care of ourselves today, right now. Because if you run out of gas... You're not going to be doing any good for anybody in the family. So you got to take care of yourself. So thank you again, Babbel. That's a Babbel chat. We're going to do it every week. And I will have some mom bloggers on each week to weigh in on that and give kind of their uh, their spin on things too and how these stories affect them and what they think about it. Because I want to hear from you. I mean, your opinions are far more interesting than mine. I can only listen to myself talk about this stuff for so long, right? And that is why we're going to have some more guests on today. My friend Jen Saxton will come on the Mom Show next. She is founder and CEO of Tot Squad. That's a local mom service, mom-oriented service that's right here in Los Angeles. Startup, small business, all on her own, total mom boss, right? But she's not a mom yet. But she helps you. Um, 
<laughs> I'm like, Jen, are you, are you, you're not a mom yet, right? You're not, not telling me something. Um, no, but she's adorable and she's fierce and she's fantastic. And what she did was left her business and her brand new home and uh, went to Texas to help out and see what she could do for the victims um, last week. And she just got back and I really want to talk to her about what her experience was like there. So we're going to get a firsthand account of what happened there and what it's like picking up and going back from L.A. to see what you can do to help moms and kids and how that went for Jen. So that's coming up next on The Mom Show. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station. Santa Clarita Philharmonic has begun its season of free concerts. The SCP is a nonprofit community based volunteer symphony orchestra comprised of local musicians from throughout the Santa Clarita Valley who are dedicated to providing quality classical music for the residents of the Santa Clarita Valley. Like the Santa Clarita Philharmonic on Facebook or visit SantaClaritaPhilharmonic.org for more information. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. Struggling to find a gift is a challenge, so hit the easy button. Shop KHTS.com. Shop KHTS.com? Gift certificates to hundreds of Santa Clarita stores and restaurants at double their value. A $30 gift certificate to Roger Dunn costs you $15. Hotels, restaurants, stores, even local golf courses, all at half price. You choose what you want with one easy click. Shop KHTS.com. Do you see it? It should be around here somewhere. No, what was that address again? Your building sign is essential to getting customers into your location. Feathers can help get your business noticed. They'll walk you through each phase of your building sign project, providing special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will give you a sign you can be proud of. Your building sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Feathers on Soledad in Canyon Country, across from the Edwards Theater. Man, are you feeling tired, stressed, or just don't have the energy you used to? Did you know this could be related to decreased testosterone levels? Luckily, there's a safe, effective solution. Weeder Prime helps support healthy testosterone levels with clinically tested key ingredients. Just two capsules of Weeder Prime each day can help change your mood, energy, focus, body fat, and lean muscle. Feel the way you felt 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Rediscover your prime with Weeder Prime. To find a retailer near you, visit WeederPrime.com. That's W-E-I-D-E-R Prime.com. K-H-T-S. It's the Mom Show. I'm Kristen Cruz here on KHTS, your hometown station. Thanks so much for hanging out with me every Thursday, 12 to 1. We actually get to do live radio. How lucky are we? This is so much fun. And then it's a podcast later on hometownstation.com, and we put it out there for you, and we put some great stories and links, by the way, to everything we talk about and these great guests we always have on the Mom Show. You can get more from them so easily. Just click on hometownstation.com on my podcast there, where it'll be archived all the links will be there so you can catch up with everybody follow them on social media find out more about this Bel Air mommy and what cool stuff she's doing or what Babel's doing right now and I will definitely make sure that I follow up with these stories on social media so you can see it in fact I just put the link for the pumpkin spice cough drops on the KHTS Facebook page right in our live feed so check it out click on it I was not making things up I was not seeing things it is the, it is a thing and I want to know from you would you? Pumpkin spice cough drops? Or is that just ridiculous? I know. I know. I probably would, though. I got it So Jen Saxton is on the phone with us now. She is founder and CEO of Tot Squad. I called her a mom boss, which she is not, but she is a boss of a mom company. Right? Jen, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's hilarious. Yeah, I started my business um, when I was, like, 25, and I still don't have any kids, nope. but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm still kind of in sweat, so hopefully soon I'll be an actual mom boss. Well, that's what happens. Well, take it, take it slow, slow down, Jen. Take it easy, <laughs> youngster. 
Oh my goodness. Talk to my husband, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to sit you down and have a little talk. Uh, Jen's company, though, is, I mean, it's 100% service for moms. It's dedication is to make life better, easier, cleany, cleaner, less stinkier for moms. <laughs> And if that is a, a, if she can wave that magic wand over your life, wouldn't you like to get that done, right? So here's what Tot Squad does. It, Tot Squad cleans the disgustingness of your baby car seat or your child car seat that you do not know how to clean, right? That you don't want to know how to clean, right? And that I'm in all honesty... Let me just tell you what. And Jen's such a genius because this is, I mean, I just think this is the smartest thing. I have, and Jen, attest to this for me, I have literally texted her and gone, oh, my gosh, my kid just barfed in my car <laughs> everywhere. Where is Tot Squad going to be? Are you going to be in Woodland Hills this weekend? Like, I literally texted her because it all happens in the car seat, babe. They got to go. They got to go. You know what I'm saying? People are always saying to me, like, oh, John, I was thinking of you the other day. I'm like, oh, really? That's so nice. They're like, yeah. Like, yeah, any, so any sort of body, uh, any things that happens, uh, Jen can clean it up. So, and, and Jen... Tell us a little bit about, because I know, obviously, Jen doesn't have a kid, but she's so smart. You're like a like an MBA or something. She's like got tons of, right? You're like a scholar. She's super smart. And she comes from a family of incredible women who are just these business, fierce business women. And so she, she looked at the mom life and went, how can I help these ladies? They are in need of something. And you kind of like, how did you do this? You assess the situation and thought, there's a need that's not being met. Yeah, well, it, it's kind of crazy. Like I said, I was I was getting an MBA at Northwestern um, up in Chicago, and and while I was at Kellogg, I knew I wanted to start my own business one day. Um, and so I kind of just started looking at millennials. I am I, I was born eighty two, so I am technically the oldest millennial. So um, I like to, to sometimes not pretend that I'm part of the the cohort. But I said, you know, my generation's really obsessed with work life balance, and we all want to work at Google so we can play ping pong whenever we feel. <laughs> <laughs> and as this generation starts to have kids, I think that work-life balance is an issue that's really going to balloon. Mm-hmm. So maybe I can find business opportunities to save moms time or frustration because I think millennials are going to outsource a lot of unpleasant tasks so they can focus their time on doing things that they love. And that is really going to be true when they start having kids. So yeah. I have like 50 ideas in a spreadsheet. Um, and uh, Top Squad was kind of this idea that car seats are really hard to clean and they're really hard to install. Actually, as many as 90% of car seats are incorrect installed or used, and a leading cause of death for children is car accidents. In fact, there's a recent study that says um, as many as 50% of kids who died in car accidents were not correctly restrained in their car seats. Uh. Um, yeah, so it's really sad. It's a really big issue. And so, um, so we do now all sorts of things. We do stroller and car seat cleaning. We do car seat safety education. And we do stroller repairs. Uh, so if, you know, the airline breaks your wheel, you know who to call. Oh, I didn't know you did that now. And Jen herself, mm-hmm. you, you're, you're actually, you may have seen her on The Doctors or on some TV shows or local news shows as well. Because you are a, what do you call it, a certified car expert installer? Yeah. I'm Shoot. a child passenger safety technician. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a five-day class to learn how to install baby car seats, which is crazy. Yes, and those are the people that you want. Those are the people that you want to help you install your car seat. So if you're going to the CHP or you're going to wherever you're going to get your car seat installed, it, what you want to do is call Jen. Just call just call Tot Squad, and she'll tell you it doesn't matter where you live. I swear they're so – all they want to do is make your life cleaner and safer. That's it. So if you just call them, they will help you out, right, Jen? You'll hook a mother up. Uh- uh, maybe we'll have to get Fireman Matt certified so uh, so he can help up in your area. <laughs> my husband. All right. He'll be he'll be your local. Look at my poor husband. He's going to be everywhere installing car seats for everybody. Um, my husband is a very awesome, helpful fireman. That is very true. So Jen is running her business here in Los Angeles. She's in the Valley. And she, but originally is from Texas. And so, of course, all of the devastation that was happening in Houston really hit home and I was texting with Jen, trying to set up like a, a, a lunch or we're going to do something. And she's like, you know what? I'm on my way to Houston right now. And that was just, it just I, I hadn't, I'm holding my phone like, oh my gosh. I'm like, 
holding this line to someone who's going into this devastated area to help people, which first of all brings a tear to my eye, Jen, and I'm so heartbroken about it, and I'm so proud to even know you that you went and did this. I want to know um, how how your trip went and what happened when you got there. Just just tell us the story. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, I think for context, so I grew up in Austin, um, but my grandparents, my aunt lived uh, in Houston, and my mom grew up in the Corpus Christi area, uh, specifically in the Rocksport area, where my great aunt and my cousin both had homes. And uh, my, my great aunt is 81 years old and was refusing to evacuate. And Friday morning, uh, before the storm hit, uh, I think every single member of our family called her until she finally agreed to go about 60 miles inland. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy that both my aunt and my cousin uh, came out of the storm safe, but unfortunately both of them lost their homes, uh, which is really devastating. Uh, I mean, Rockport is a really small working-class town. Um, it's kind of a suburb of a, of a small city, and um, there's a lot of people there that live paycheck to paycheck, and the entire community is just devastated. Uh, 140 mile-an-hour winds. Um, my aunt lived right on the water with all windows. And so as soon as the storm winds break the glass, um, once the wind gets inside your home, it just whips everything around. So every interior door was broken, pulled apart, um, just shredded from the inside out. And, and then came the storm surge. So the storm surge just washed through the downstairs of her home. And, uh, you know, thank God she wasn't there, but she, she said she was worried about looters. And I said, well, oh you know, you're 81. <laughs> so what? If somebody tries to lose your house, what are you going to do about it? Like, get oh out gosh. of there. Um, so so it, it was that, you know, that was where it really hit home for me was like, oh, my gosh, like my family members have, have, are homeless. They're homeless, mm -hmm. um, which is really scary. And I used to live in Houston. And so uh, I pretty soon started to see a lot of my, my former uh, colleagues that used to work at NASA um, that were having their homes flooded. One of my sorority sisters lost her home uh, with the flooding in Houston. And I was just sitting out here in L.A. feeling totally helpless. Right. Because what, what can you really do? Yeah. It's like, okay, you can write a check to some charity. It takes five minutes, and you just feel like you can't do anything to help the people you love. Right. Uh, so it was really frustrating. So I finally figured out, I mean, airports were completely shut down in Houston, but I got a flight to Dallas mm -hmm. and then was going to head down to Houston um, in my friend's Tesla because there's a gas shortage. And we said, well, if we can at least, you know, take an electric oh car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Into the gas. Um, but, you know, we had so many hurdles trying to get out there to help people. My aunt um, in Houston, she's been uh, Houston Airport's emergency coordinator for a long time. And so she's on all the state calls with FEMA and everything. And they basically said they did not want any self-deployed volunteers headed out there yeah. because, mm -hmm. one, there was a chemical plant fire that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people still today have homes that are underwater. The water is not done receding yet, um, and they can't even start the cleanup process, which is, which is terrifying. Um, and, and there's just a shortage. She said any resource that you use if you come down here is taking it away from somebody who needs it more. Uh, so she suggested that we actually stay in Dallas over the week. So we stayed okay. there, and we went to the shelters with the evacuees. Um, and ended up at a Red Cross shelter with about 200 families um, that had lost homes and been evacuated from Houston. And it was just heartbreaking. Um, wow. and, and especially because it was so hard. The Red Cross actually requires a background check to become a volunteer. And it takes like three days oh, wow. to get a background check approved. So I didn't have three days to wait. Like I knew I had to fly back to LA yesterday. Um, so we called the shelter. We said, what donations do you need? And they said, like, we do not need any donations. We're totally full. Don't bring anything. I wow. said, were you sure? Is there anything specific? And they said, well, actually, we don't have any hairbrushes. We just got all these new women and children. Like, can we get some hair ties oh, and hairbrushes? And we're like, gosh. we have a mission. So yeah, we were happy yeah. to have a personal mission. We showed up with our hairbrushes, and we talked our way in and got the Red Cross volunteer wristbands to help sorting donations for them. Mm. So I guess that's one piece of advice I have is for anybody, especially in Florida, where the storm hasn't hit yet, mm -hmm. if you're thinking you want to help out there, get registered on the Red Cross website today. Mm. That way they can get your background check processed in time to help out. So, yes, we were able to spend this weekend helping sort um, all of the various donations from people and and, and I think my lesson learned there was just that, that don't send stuff. 
uh, it's really better if you can find a local organization to donate to. Right, right. And ask them what they need. You know, go ahead and ask, you know, like John did. You know, just, just, what do you guys need? Like, what exactly do you need? Because it's, that is true. You don't know exactly what their shortage is. Or a lot of times, and I have found this to be true when it comes to volunteering, I'll call and I'll be like, do you need us down there? And they're like, nope. <laughs> we don't <laughs> like but it looks like you do and they're like no you cannot come i'm like oh okay then so it, it, it is definitely good to ask now i've got to ask you when you're walking this i've never been in a shelter in a disaster knock on wood thank goodness we haven't had that here in la um what is it like in the shelters when you went into the shelter what's what's going on in there how are the beds laid out how are the people what are they doing what's going on yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. I had never been in one either. And um, so it was at like a rec center. Um, so they had turned the gym into a room full of cots. Uh, so there were all these families, uh, you know, w- with their cots in that room. And then there, there were a lot of local organizations that had come together with like toys and activities for the kids, which is great. Mm. Um, and I even saw kids in there studying because they wanted to get back to school as quickly as possible, um, trying to get into college, things like that. So So there were definitely lots of people staying busy. Um, But from a volunteer perspective, like, it was sheer chaos. Um, There were way more volunteer, I mean, way more donations than they had capacity or space for. So the other thing we ended up doing was running out to Target to buy shelving units and storage bins just to try to, like, vertically stack things. Because I I literally walked into a a room that was a wall full of trash bags of clothes. Oh, my gosh. And you try to, like, touch one, and the whole thing is, like, at risk of collapsing on top of you. Um, And so a lot of clothing, they they actually ended up in a dumpster. Because people sometimes, I think, just donate clothing that, you know, they didn't want. And it's like, well, these people don't really want that either. (laughs) Um, Mm. I mean, not in the nicest way, Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, when they're when there's other people bringing in brand new clothes with tags on it and these people are sorting they're like they're going to pick the new clothes over over the stained clothes that somebody else didn't want anyway um but but sorting those donations just took time away from volunteers and we could have been doing higher value add tasks Mm -hmm. um and then the other thing that was really something i'd never thought of was that these people don't have like even luggage or bags to put the donations in and so they needed us to try and find, like, those Ikea-sized bags that would fit under the cot. Oh, right. Because, like, the cot is, like, their home, right? That's, like, their only personal space. Um, so finding bags or duffel bags that they could then store the donations in after they kind of pick out what they want. Was, I think that would be a great donation if people are looking for specific things to give. Mm-hmm. What were the babies and the kids um, like? I mean, I, you know, the good thing about you know, little littles is that they don't really know too much about what's going on. They can't put it all together exactly. But, I mean, they've been displaced from everything that they know that is familiar and their routine that mom and dad try to continue. I mean, how are the children dealing with it and the babes? Well, babies. You know, I, I mean, I think... I think in general, I was really, really surprised, and I shouldn't have been because they're Texans. Um, so mm-hmm. Texas strong. Um, people are really resilient. So I think that people were really, really grateful that we were there to help them, like grateful that they had a, a safe place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some of the kids, I think, were just like in a little bit of a state of shock. Like I remember talking to a fifth grade girl who almost like didn't want to speak, you know, really shy. I think she was just totally overwhelmed by the whole experience. Um, but I was able to give her some uh, a bag full of, like, Play-Doh <laughs> yeah. for her to go project with. And so, um, you know, I think it's just really, really overwhelming. But generally, people were so grateful and in great spirits. And, and I'm hopeful that, that people don't, like, just forget about this in two weeks and, and move on and, and not continue offering support to Houston because it's going to take months and months for people to rebuild their homes. And, I mean, you don't even think about the fact that all these businesses have been damaged so people who worked there don't have a job to go to. And obviously the companies, I own a small business, I don't know that my company could continue to pay salaries for people if we weren't able to generate revenue. Um, so, so there's like, a, it's kind of a whole economy is really stuck and it has a ripple effect downstream that we've got to continue supporting these families for a long time. Wow. Jen Saxton, founder and CEO of Tot Squad, on the phone with us on the Mom Show right now on KHTS. If you go to totsquad.com, you can find out more about Jen's uh, company and her mission to try to help moms. And then again, on another mission in Texas. And I just really appreciate all that you do. And, and you know, now that you're, you're back and 
we are hearing these stories still coming in and we're everybody's bracing for Irma now. Are there certain maybe foundations or uh, outreach centers or organizations that you can recommend to us as moms when we want to help out right now from where we are because I know that I've I've talked to um, a couple of friends of mine Nicole Feliciano from Mom Trends has said mm-hmm. diapers are something that's really important that that is in need right now so baby to baby might be a good organization um, are there any that you've run into that you know are still actively doing work to help moms and kids yeah, I mean, I'm really, Todd Squad is supporting an organization called Save the Children, um, and they provide a lot of crucial supplies to moms and kids, including gear like strollers and cribs. Um, I, I read a statistic or read a story about um, how there were you know, 20 in one of the shelters that slept in cardboard boxes, um, which was just, you know, so sad. So I think that organizations like Save the Children that can get that crucial gear to these families as they start to rebuild their lives um, is, is definitely great. Um, from a donations perspective, I think if you're looking to give items, I would just encourage people honestly to support their local community because I think that Houston is really overwhelmed and the, the physical donations of stuff are overwhelming the supply chain right now. Mm. So I think if you want to support the hurricane um, victims directly, I would make cash donations. But if you do have other items, there are so many, so many families all over this country that are, are living in poverty and in need. Um, I've worked a lot with the Good Plus Foundation, uh, formerly known as Baby Buggy, here uh, in Los Angeles and in New York City, and they also collect um, used baby gear that can be redistributed to families in need. So I think those are a couple of great ones. And uh, always the Red Cross, um, uh, you know, is running these shelters to use donations. Um, and, and blood banks. Somebody said, well, you know, the hurricane's not really a, a major injury event. I said, yeah, but, you know, a lot of the blood banks were actually flooded. So they lost their entire supply. So continue to give blood. That's always helpful as well. Yeah, that's that's great advice for us because we do want to be actively involved. We want to do something to help, you know, and it's I think it's human nature. I always tell my kids there's more good than bad out in the world. Whenever anything happens, I always let, remind them there are more good people than bad people in the world. And I think that we, as humans, we come together and we want to really help each other. And if you're moved to do so right now, um, those are some great suggestions that Jen put out there. And, and that being prepared, like giving to our local community communities, those in need, and helping us just be stronger every day and prepared every day uh, here will help us if we are ever in a situation like that, a catastrophic situation. So that is a good way of looking at Jen. I just think you're fantastic. I think that you're wonderful, and I love Todd Squad. Thank goodness. Otherwise, my car would reek like vomit all the time. It would just be a sticky, disgusting Mast. Yeah, I thought your kids were more of the snack offenders in your car. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're the Slurpee spills and the ketchup and the ranch dressing. They are. And but and, and the great the thing that I love so much also about real quick before I let you go, Jen, the thing that I love so much about Tot Squad also is that you know I kind of. I'm so happy to know that I'm not the only messy, disgusting car owning mom that there is. That in fact. <laughs> That in fact, celebrity moms of the utmost grace and hoity toityness or beauty or whatever um, go through the exact same stuff that we do because they go to Jen's company too. And I mean, like, can you, are you allowed to name drop moms that have stinky cars or not? I mean, two that two that have publicly endorsed us are yes. Sarah Schelper and Juliana Rancic. But yeah, you know, <gasps> uh, kids are dirty everywhere. It's a See? universal problem. <laughs> See, it's not just us. Okay, so just so you know, it kind of levels the playing field. When you become a mom, no matter what you do for a living or how much you're making or whatever you're doing happening, we are all in the same boat, or in this case, in the same stinky car. So thank you, Jen Saxton at Dot Squad, for helping us out. Thank you for coming on the Mom Show today, Jen. Problem. Have a good one. Thanks, Kristen. You too, hon. Bye-bye. Bye. Go to totsquad.com to find out more about Jen's company. She's absolutely fabulous. And I know that if you go to her website right now, you can get $5 off your first one. And these are to your house kind of like Uber cleaning ideas. They actually come to you in a van and clean your stuff for you. So if you're really, you know, busy and you can't get to Jen, she'll come to you. It's, it's a very cool service. She's a very smart girl. So, and doing some really good things. Great stuff. And I will make sure all those links are up on the hometownstation.com. Thank you again for being here with me. I'm Kristen Cruz on The Mom Show on KHTS, your hometown station. 
The city of Santa Clarita has so much going on this year. Be on the lookout for amazing events happening throughout the year, including the Cowboy Festival, concerts in the park, Thursdays at Newhall, and the Santa Clarita Marathon. There are also a number of fun activities and things to do year round, including outdoor recreation, hiking and bike trails, adult classes, art exhibits, youth sports programs, and more. You can even sign up to be a volunteer. Learn more at santa-clarita.com. Little I Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little I Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleileaders.org. When it's time to improve your game, it's time for Roger Dunn. Roger Dunn Golf Shops have all the top brands with professional assistants who will actually guide you with helpful advice. They've got it all. The brand names, the apparel, accessories, clubs, training equipment, videos, GPS, range finders. It's the one store to find the perfect gift for your golfing enthusiast. Roger Dunn is the only Santa Clarita store where you can trade up your equipment, improve your game. Roger Dunn on Main Street in Old Town, New Hall. Man, are you feeling tired, stressed, or just don't have the energy you used to? Did you know this could be related to decreased testosterone levels? Luckily, there's a safe, effective solution. Weeder Prime helps support healthy testosterone levels with clinically tested key ingredients. Just two capsules of Weeder Prime each day can help change your mood, energy, focus, body fat, and lean muscle. Feel the way you felt 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Rediscover your prime with Weeder Prime. To find a retailer near you, visit WeederPrime.com. That's W-E-I-D-E-R Prime.com. Coming soon to the Canyon Santa Clarita, Gin Blossoms, Eddie Money, Chris Christofferson, Timothy B. Schmidt, Patula Clark, Tower of Power, Berlin, Todd Rundgren, Jefferson Starship, John Hyatt, The Spinners, Doc In, Lynch Mob, English Beat, Robbie Krieger of The Doors, Cinderella's Tom Kiefer, Led Zepp again, Donovan Frankenreiter, Boogie Nights, and many more. Soulful Sunday Brunch every Sunday, Country Nights on Wednesdays, and they're the perfect place to host your holiday parties and special events. The Canyon Santa Clarita, where music meets the soul. Tickets available through Ticketmaster. The most charming new restaurant is now in Santa Clarita. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark. Voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Now, discover Marston's new Santa Clarita location. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road in McBean. Or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station, hometown station, KHTS. It's the Mom Show. Hi there, I'm Kristen Cruz. Thank you so much for hanging out with me every Thursday live from 12 to 1 on the radio here at KHTS. Thanks guys for doing this. And then it's a podcast on hometownstation.com and you can check it out on my blog, of course. If you're following me on social media, I do a lot of crazy stuff. As the life of a mom blogger. Well, you know, I was on Coast 103.5 as your morning radio show host for many, many years, Mark and Kristen. So I drove to work with you in the morning, and we dropped off the kids together, and then we went to the Starbucks drive through and then we sat in traffic on the 405, and then we got to the parking lot at work and sat there for a little longer because we were playing like a game, or we had the Hollywood Roundup to do, or, you know, something like that. And then you went to work. And hopefully, in most of your offices, many, many dentist offices around the globe they were listening to coast because we're we're great uh we were great at work for listening station as well but i loved spending my mornings with you for many years in la and i'm so excited that i get to come back and do something that i love live radio khts it's really really cool and the progress was from my crazy career which was my entire life to having two babies on the radio, which you know about, right? And then realizing I should probably hang out with them a little bit. As I did, I became a mom blogger. Less on air time, more writing, and getting to know this great community 
of mom bloggers. And that turned into a podcast because they were saying, hey, Chris, how come we don't hear you talk about it anymore? You're just writing about it. And then the podcast turned into a radio show. And now I am here and so happy to be here with you. And that's how I met so many of these great guests that we've had on the show so far. Today, again, I'd love to thank our guest, Kathy Copcut, who's also known as the Bel Air Mommy. BelairMommy.com is her blog. Always something fabulous happening in her life. She is the coolest. I don't know how she does it all, but she is almost everywhere at the same time. And it's always a cool, fabulous place. You've got to check out. Her latest was on the red carpet with Reese Witherspoon. Spoon for the new movie Home Again coming out today. I encourage you to check that out. And Reese is such a sweet person in person, glowing, pretty, kind. You know, you're always wondering what are they like in real life. Oh my goodness. So creative, so down to earth, so that ha- southern hospitality for sure, and really inclusive and such a cheerleader for moms and women in the entertainment industry, which is another reason why I love her so much. And thank you to Jen Saxton, founder and CEO of Tot Squad. Go to totsquad.com right now and check out her company, and you can get $5 off your first clean seat that you order from Jen, which, believe me, you need to clean your car seat. It's disgusting. I know it is. I'm right there with you. Plus, it may not be installed correctly, and when that's a safety thing, and you know how I'm about safety with my fireman husband, so please check it out, and you can even ask Jen where near you uh, she recommends you could go to get that car seat installed properly, and she will totally help you out. You've just made a couple of new girlfriends today here on The Mom Show as we're talking about things. Cody weighed in on pumpkin spice cough drops. He said, I guess it's a thing. Uh, people are probably going to buy it. He knows that I am because I'm a freak, and I say PSL instead of pumpkin spice latte. I thought everybody rolled like that. Come on, Cody. So that picture is up on our Facebook page right now where our live feed is for KHTS. We have Captain Underpants coming to DVD this weekend. I will be there on Sunday, downtown LA with my kids. So definitely tune in to my social media tags, at Kristen Cruz. And I'll be doing some live stuff there on Instagram. And then the Bad Moms Christmas trailer. You interested? Yay or nay? I don't know. I heard a lot of mixed feelings from moms about the first movie even know they were making a second movie but they are and we've got the trailer and i am going to put it up on our facebook page where the khts uh facebook page is streaming the mom show right now so you can check it out as soon as i pop off the air that is it for me today but next week we'll be back for another mom show 12 to 1 live right here on khts your hometown station